All right, South Point, well, what's up, guys? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, welcome to your second installment of Midweek with Matt and Kyle. Uh, if we were pre-recording this, Matt and, or Tim and, and Rob would make my voice like awesome, be like, Midweek with Matt and Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. So like, if, no. we're gonna, if we're gonna do this every week, we should have like a jingle or Yeah, we something. should have a, like an intro, like a cool intro yeah, to yeah. intro us, like Wayne's World. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right. So, um, hey, we're here today just to kind of hang out and catch up midweek. Um, right now we are live and we're at several different <laughs> locations. And so um, if you're joining us uh, here on Facebook Live or at our southpointforyou.com slash live uh, or uh, any other number of, of ways, we're just so glad that you're here. We want you to be interactive. Um, use that chat and uh, encourage one another and, uh, and keep up with the conversation as we go. And so, um, you know, it's been a crazy week two of this coronavirus <coughs> it stuff. It has, yeah. And so um, a lot of people, not, not us, but a lot of people are enjoying some rest and downtime. And so uh, in the chat section, um, what's one thing that you're doing this week or that you've done um, that maybe you wouldn't have had the chance to do otherwise? Uh, take a minute and do that. And so, uh, Matt, how about for you? Uh, is there anything that, that uh, you're looking forward to as things slow down a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I've been really fortunate. Uh, both my daughters uh, were home on spring break, and so they got an extended spring break. And so it was just really good to have them home. I think, you know, um, the next generation is kind of going, hey, what do we do? We've never faced anything like this. So it was just good to have my family all together. Yep. So, uh, you know, the, today, uh, Governor Hogan had another press release, and, and he announced uh, that schools were going to close for uh, a few more weeks. And so that either uh, created great joy in the kids or great panic for parents. Um, but, you know, this is kind of an unprecedented time for at least for our generation. And um, so, you know, people are feeling a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, yeah. any, any thoughts on people's feelings? Yeah, and um, we were talking a little bit about this before we actually uh, came on live uh, to Facebook or our website or to our YouTube channel. Um, and so I wanted to kind of start off with something and saying, listen, um, you and I and we, um, we are in uncharted territory. I mean, we, we've never faced anything like this as a generation. Sure. And so um, I just want to say to you as maybe a trusted friend to go, you know, it's okay if you don't feel okay. Okay. Um, there are a ton of questions that none of us have answers to, um, and, and that's that's okay. Um, I really want to look to all the moms, to all the dads. It doesn't matter whether you're single or married or divorced or wherever you're at, your status is. Um, it's okay to give yourself some grace mm -hmm. in this season, especially um, when there's so much up in the air, and to give all others around you uh, grace in this season. Like, it's just okay. Um, we don't have to be super parents or super people. Sure. I think we just need to try to take one step at a time um, and just do the next right thing. Uh, one of the things that were reasons that we're even doing this, Kyle, is um, we just want everyone, all of our friends and all of the people that consider themselves a family here at South Point, um, for you to know that you are not alone. And that's why on a weekly Wednesday, we just want to get together because we have a place um, on a digital platform to, to get together. And so um, before we go any further, it'd probably be appropriate for us to maybe um, maybe ask God and to maybe, you know, remember and to be dependent upon Him. Um, and so we've asked the worship team to lead us in a worship song this evening um, as we start off. Um, but before we actually dive into the worship song, uh, I'd like to just say a quick prayer for us. So um, wherever you're at, if you're driving, keep your eyes open. Um, if you're watching at home or any other where and you can kind of join us, uh, that would be great. Hey God, um, we just invite you to be here, God. Whether we're sitting on our couch, um, whether we're still at work, um, uh, whether we're listening to this driving, um, God, wherever we're at, um, may we take a second and invite your Holy Spirit to come in. God, we ask that you would give us peace. God, we ask that you would give us wisdom. God, we don't have all the answers, but you do. And so God, in this time, we look to you. Regardless of the circumstances, we know that you are good and that you are in control. Uh, so we invite you in during this time. May our hearts and our eyes and our uh, souls be set upon you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. So we're going to Point it away and let our worship team take it away and lead us.
amazing worship team. Uh, sometimes it's great to just bring a throwback uh, back in. That song has encouraged the church, um, you know, for, for decades and, and uh, just need to be reminded that at the end of the day, um, we look to Jesus, not necessarily to our government or, or even to each other as much as we want to rely on one another. Um, but really, it's about Jesus and about the power of God in our life. So um, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for Wednesdays with Matt and Kyle. And if you've never been with us before, kind of our format is, is um, we want this to be relational and conversational. Um, we want to enjoy each other and have fun, but we also want to take a minute um, every Wednesday and just kind of center ourselves um, around the scriptures, around what God has to say for us, and just to pick up some wisdom. And so, uh, Matt, I think you have a, a word for us tonight. Or? Yeah. Um, hey, just so you know, uh, I, I was spending some time and just preparation and prayer uh, for our time together, and I think um, hopefully uh, that God spoke to my heart and has something for all of us today. I know uh, that this spoke to my heart, and it actually comes from an encounter uh, that Jesus had. And so if you have a Bible or you have the Bible app on your phone and you want to be able to put that up and follow along, I'm going to storytell it. Uh, so if you want to, you can go back and look at it later. Um, but it comes from the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Luke, uh, Luke 17 through about 27. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of story tell it to you. And so uh, Jesus shows up um, to this town um, and he begins to heal people and to love on people and to care for people and to speak. Um, and then we are let known by Luke. He says, listen, all the religious leaders and all the Pharisees decide they want to come and check out Jesus. Now, I need to let you know, the Pharisees and the religious leaders weren't there to actually like get close to God. They were there to kind of critique and see what they could find flaws in Jesus. Um, and so they showed up and it says that they sat at the feet of Jesus and they filled up the house uh, that Jesus was speaking in. And matter of fact, the house was so full, there was people outside of the house and it was crazy. Uh, there were some friends that uh, had a friend that was a paralytic, that he was not able to move and walk. And so they heard that Jesus was coming to town. And so uh, they put their friend on a mat. Uh, they got together, a couple of them, and they began to carry their friend to see Jesus. And kind of the thing about the story that we don't really know is whether the paralytic even really wanted to go. Um, we don't know what he thought about Jesus. Practicing we, social distancing. Yeah, it wasn't, I, we, it wasn't we don't like know. Yeah, we, we don't know. Uh, we know that it was just the faith of the friends 
friends uh, that decided to bring uh, their friend to Jesus, maybe thinking and believing uh, that Jesus could do something that they couldn't do and no one else could do. And much to their chagrin and their frustration is when they showed up, um, there was just a crowd and they couldn't even get to Jesus. He was so packed in. Um, and here's what I love about the, these friends is they saw an uh, obstacle, but they didn't let this obstacle keep them from getting their friend to the feet of Jesus. Um, and the eyewitness account tells us they went up on the roof and you have to understand in that culture, they had these like thatched roofs that they had put stuff on that was just made out of um, things that you could tear apart. So they got up on the roof and they started tearing it apart. I mean, can you imagine having a party in your house and a group of people gets up on your roof and starts digging a hole? And literally, I'm, Jesus is speaking. I bet people are freaking out because straw and clay and all these things are falling down. And all of a sudden, this hole pops open and the sun shines through. And all of a sudden, these four guys start lowering this paralytic like right in front of the religious leaders and the Pharisees. And, and they just drop this guy in front of Jesus. And then Jesus looks at the paralytic and then he looks up at the roof and it doesn't say this, but I believe he had one of those smiles on his face that only Jesus could have. I'm sure he looked up and went, that's pretty cool. And then he looked at him and he says, and it says he saw their faith. And so he turned to the paralytic and then he said, your sins are forgiven. To which I'm sure the friends that had just ruined a roof, that had carried this guy and done all these things said, hey Jesus, it's not his sins, it's his legs. Could you help with that? Now the religious leaders of the day and the Pharisees who were there, they started getting all huffy and puffy. Remember, they were there to be critical and to find a flaw in Jesus. And they began to think to themselves and mutter, who does this Jesus think that he is that he could forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. Jesus said out loud to everyone, he said, listen, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is it okay for me to say his sins are forgiven? And then he turns to him and says, what do you think is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to get up and walk? And the room began to murmur. And then Jesus says, so that you know that the son of man has the ability and the power to forgive sins, I want you to know this. And so he looks at the paralytic and he says, get up, take up your mat and walk. And all of a sudden the paralytic, he begins to move and his toes wiggle, his feet begin to move. And there's a murmur through the crowd and people start to freak out and the paralytic gets up and he takes his mat and he is leaping and he is full of joy. And his friends are like, "Woo, that is awesome. And the crowd is amazed. And you might be asking this evening, what is this encounter that Jesus had with these friends, the religious leaders, and this paralytic have to do with us today. And so this evening, I'd like to make four or a couple brief observations about how this passage applies to me. It may apply to you. I think it might apply to all of us tonight. And here's kind of my first observation, is this guy had pieces of his body that weren't working, and because there were certain parts of his body that weren't working, he was paralyzed. And when you're paralyzed, life doesn't go the way it's intended to. And Kyle, I was thinking about as our time together, that worry and fear are causing us to not be able to work the way that we're meant to work. I don't know if it's because we're out of work, um, because maybe the kids are home, somebody's yeah. gotta stay home. But I think in this season, worry and fear have many of us and our hearts are paralyzed and life isn't working the way it's intended to. And I think this is so neat because God and Jesus wants to show up in our lives in the midst of this fear where we're paralyzed to do what only he can do. And I don't know if maybe in the chat section or someone, maybe you might wanna write down or say, what's an area of your life that you feel, feel paralyzed in? Yeah, I think um, you know, with that, with this situation going on, um, you know, typically we might read a passage like this and not really relate to what's going on and go, oh, that's nice, a paralytic, and it's, it's a bummer for him. Um, but I've kind of observed this week uh, people from all different walks of life um, feeling that kind of paralyzed feeling. Um, you know, whether you're a, uh, an hourly employee um, or you're yeah. a business owner, um, <clears throat> this is impacting you in, in a significant way that yeah. um, kind of paralyzes your, your future outlook to go, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know. We have two kids at home or we have our two parents at work and how do we get the kids taken care of. And so, um, again, I think this is, this is for everybody. Um, we've all felt that way at some point. Yeah. 
And so here's the neat thing is that that's just the beginning of this encounter with Jesus. And, and here's where it kind of like, I feel it becomes very relevant. Um, you might miss this if you've ever read it. It wasn't until I read it a couple times that I noticed something. And here's what I noticed. In, what I noticed was it was the religious leaders and them sitting at the feet of Jesus, not to listen to Jesus, but to find fault, that actually kept the people that needed to get to Jesus, they were hindered from getting to Jesus. And I thought, isn't that a lot like today, where I think there are people who are paralyzed with fear. I think there are people who maybe don't have hope. I think there are people who have questions and doubts and worry and are wondering and hoping that maybe God does care, who might be being hindered by sometimes the response of Christians or leaders or other people um, in Christian, we might actually be hindering them in certain ways um, that we act. It actually might be Christians keeping people who need to see Jesus from actually seeing Jesus. Sure. And so um, one thought that I had was, is, you know, I'm on social media now a lot, trying to communicate and stay in touch with everyone. And sometimes in social media, I see Christians um, politicizing things from the left, from the right, sure. and from the middle, um, and putting their politics uh, ahead of their fellow man. Yeah. And I think that can be a way of hindering people um, from seeing the Jesus that we love and serve. For sure, for sure. I know we've talked about that a lot, that that all of us view life through a lens. Um, and so um, when, when panic sets in, when we lose control, um, I think a lot of us naturally gravitate towards um, what, what can we control? How can we put an angle on this or a voice yeah. um, that makes sense? And, and that really, sometimes that's just not the time for that. Yeah. Um, one of the other ways I thought that sometimes we as followers of Jesus may hinder people from seeing Jesus as, you know, we can politicize it. I've seen people religiousize it and they're going, hey, this is God's judgment. And I go, man, pe people don't need to hear that right now. They need to know that there's a God who made them, a God who loved them so much that he died on the cross for them. And so, um, and also we can go into self-preservation mode. I mean, you know what? Like we can become hoarders and we can become only focused on ourselves. And so in this season, I think it's very true that like, hey, we don't wanna be the group that keeps people who need Jesus in this season from the very Jesus that they need and are looking for. Now, here's one of the other things that I had is, it was the faith of the friends that caused this miracle. The thing that was hopeless, where Jesus brought hope, didn't happen because of the faith of the paralytic. It happened because of the faith of the friends. I think this is the amazing part of this encounter with Jesus. Jesus doesn't look at the paralytic and go, hey, you're a great solid dude. Hey, you don't deserve this. Hey, I wanna help you out. No, Jesus turns to the people that tore the roof up and lowered them in. And he said, he saw their faith. And I think this is so appropriate for us today. Did you know that it can be the faith of us, followers of Jesus in Christ, that can make the difference in the lives of our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our coworkers? It is literally a great opportunity in a season where people are paralyzed with worry and fear for our faith to come to the forefront and create space for people to encounter Jesus. What an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think when we talk about um, social distancing and, and things like that, it really is about physical distancing. It's not yeah. about relational distancing. Um, but we have to be proactive about that. We have to like kind of decide ahead of time. I'm going to make sure I, I take a few names down. You can't take everybody. You can't stay connected with everybody all the time. Yeah. But but one, two, three friends, you're going to say, hey, I'm intentionally going to make sure um, that that we can walk through this together because you know the Bible says two are better than one because if one falls down. You know they can pick them up, and um, all of us trip up sometimes. And you need you need at least one friend. So um, be proactive about that. Maybe just think about who can be your one or two people. Yeah, I mean you could call a friend that you haven't called in a while. You could uh, private message a friend on your text or on your phone or on uh, Instagram or Facebook or any of those mediums. Um, this is an opportunity where our hope our trust, our faith in the unmovable, un unshakable truth that the tomb is empty, to help carry those who may not have that hope yet to the feet of the only one that can give them hope, and that is Jesus. Yeah. 
And then uh, one of my observations that really struck home to me was Jesus' response wasn't to instantly heal the guy's legs. Jesus immediately said, your sins are forgiven. Jesus looked at what was wrong, not on the outside, mm -hmm. but on the inside. And I think for many of us, I know this is true for me, and I bet this is true for you, we always want God to fix the outside, right? Sure. We want God to fix the circumstances. We want God to fix other people. Um, we want God to fix this pandemic. And I don't think God's heart is happy about the situation, but the reality is, is this pandemic is temporary. And the problem and the brokenness of the world is this, is that if God doesn't fix what's wrong on the inside of with humanity, yeah. even after the pandemic is over, the brokenness on the inside always ends up on That's the good. outside. And so if we don't fix what's on the inside, if we don't give God space to fix that, then what's on the outside will always be broken. It will just be a new set of brokenness. And I love the truth tellingness of Jesus, that he addresses the issue of the heart first and then the outside second. And I was uh, on a call with our staff um, earlier this week and said, hey, in this season um, where we are uncertain, what is it that God wants to do in our heart? And maybe that's a question that we should all be asking in this season, what is it that God wants to do in our heart? Mm -hmm. Because no matter how good it gets on the outside, if we're not changed people on the inside, it really doesn't matter. Sure, thanks Matt. Lastly, here's the thing that I want to close with, and it's this. It's that in a thing, in a season, in a situation that people could not fix, Jesus could do what people couldn't. In this season where we may feel like there's no hope, in this season where it's so uncertain, in the seasons where we don't have answers, there is great news. There is one who cares. There is one who is in control. And there is someone who can bring hope where it seems hopeless. And it's not Matt, it's not Kyle, it's not our government, it's not South Point Church. It's a person and his name is Jesus. And he can bring hope where there is no hope. And so here's my simple challenge to us, is that a community or a group of followers of Jesus, that we would reach out to our community and our friends, and that we would carry our neighbors, our friends, our families, and our coworkers, and allow our faith to bring them and to see Jesus so that they can experience the hope that we have in Christ. So not a whole sermon on a Wednesday evening, but just some thoughts of a situation where Jesus brought hope to a hopeless situation that I think applies to us this evening. It's almost as if uh, one of our core values at South Point should be Jesus is a big deal. Jesus is a big deal. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Well, hey guys, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, as we wrap up, I want to let you know um, that we are continuing to be the church. You know, I just keep coming back to this mantra that the <clears throat> church isn't canceled, um, that, that we are continuing to, to gather and to serve as the church. Uh, you probably saw that um, over the last week or so, we've been uh, opening a um, kind of open house for our friends and neighbors in Colony Square, uh, connected to our after school program and our partnership with Three Oaks um, Shelter. And so um, thank you so much for those of you who have partnered with us. Uh, we want you to know that uh, if, if you haven't heard, we have a COVID-19 relief fund um, set up through South Point Church that's specifically going to go um, to help uh, ease the, the, the burden here in our local community. And so um, you can check that out at southpointview.com slash donate. Um, our cause and care team, they're, they're working really hard to stay connected and to serve um, even in the middle of some restrictions and, and um, some tightening. And so I want you to know that it's still active. If you have questions about that, you can contact our uh, cause and care pastor, Paula, at peacox at southpointforyou.com, and that'll be in the uh, comments section. Uh, the second thing we want you to know is that youth group is still kicking. Um, they've had to move online just like everything yep. else that, that yep. in the world. Digitally. And so um, Sunday night, they had high school youth group. Last night, they had middle school youth group. My son loved it. Um, and they're, they're getting together, they're playing games, they're doing worship, um, they're hearing an encouraging message. And, and most importantly, um, they're connecting with an adult uh, leader who cares about them, who is asking them how they're personally doing uh, in this season. And so if you have a middle school or high school student that isn't connected, um, we wanna make sure that they're able to jump in on this. You know, maybe going to a youth group on a Sunday night was a little bit scary, showing up to a, a different environment was a big step. 
Um, and, and kids live online. They're used to kind of scrolling with their hands and, um, and doing relationships that way. And so maybe they'd be willing to check out youth group uh, through our, our Zoom groups. So if you're interested in that, make sure you contact Kayla Smith at ksmith, <laughs> sorry, ksmith at southpointforyou.com. All right, so that's our main announcements. The last thing we want you to be aware of um, is that as the church continues to, to serve and to uh, lead the way in this season, um, that the financial um, you know, need of the church continues, but you know, really need isn't a great motivator. Um, so, so rather than be uh, express the need, we really want you to know that God is continuing to be active. Uh, we've gotten reports back of, of how much the um, uh, devotionals and the material that, that Pastor Matt has led us, that the Sunday morning services are encouraging. And so if you are interested in continuing to partner with South Point Church, we want to encourage you to uh, check out our, our website, South Point for You. Dot com. Yeah, um, I would say, listen, this is great news. The church isn't a building. The church isn't a location. The church is a community of people who follow Jesus. And so um, I said from the beginning, part of why we're doing this is that we are for you. We are for your family. Um, that's why we do daily devotionals. Uh, that's why there's a Parent Q app for those of you yeah. stuck at home um, with your kids uh, for you to connect. Um, we have all of our small group leaders um, connected and trained on Zoom that, so they can continue continue small groups. So we're continuing to be the church. We're just doing it through digital platforms. And so we want to continue to serve you as long as we are allowed to. And so as we kind of end this and close this, uh, I just want to remind you of a simple saying that we have here at South Point, And it goes something like this. You are not alone and you matter deeply to God. God bless and have a great evening.